Hey guys, it's Matt. Uh, just want to start trying to work on some of these calculations here. So what I have right now in this first little bit is um, entrainment ratio. So when you have like a Venturi mask, um, how to determine uh, in this first example, we have a, a per given percentage. So 30% oxygen and we need to know what the O2 to air ratio is and how to calculate that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and flip this over here. All right, so we are calculating the O2 ratio for 30% uh, oxygen. So the trick to that is this little formula here. So we know we're looking for a ratio. So we know we're looking for an X value and a Y value, right? And it has to be in sort of this kind of ratio. So uh, the trick is we know uh, that oxygen, generally speaking, is gonna be like provided at 100%, right? So if you take 100 minus the value there, and we divide that by the percent of oxygen we know we're delivering, or uh, you know, you might see that as FiO2. Subtract that, uh, 21. So 21, uh, as you may know, is the approximate percentage of oxygen that exists in room air. So that's what I mean by RA right there is room air. So room air is approximately 21% oxygen, 78% nitrogen, right? And then like 1% argon and other trace gases and stuff. So we use this formula here. If you do the math, you will get 70 over nine. Now, that will lead you to say that sometimes you'll see this done as 20. Uh, someone even tell you for specific values of FiO2, you can use 20 instead. Uh, assuming your professor's giving this to you in kind of a multiple choice uh, exam style, uh, as, as kind of the NBRC would, I would imagine uh, the answer would be fairly obvious, unless you have a really cruel instructor, perhaps. Um, who really does differentiate, but because this doesn't exactly, equal, I already know the answer to this question. The answer to this question is going to be eight to one. That's because I've memorized the table for certain specific uh, percentages. But uh, if you were working through, so we have this, this 70 over nine. So what we do, well, if you divide nine by 70, right? You get zero. Nine goes into 70 seven times. You get 63. You do your basic. Okay, well, we add a decimal, we drop a zero. Well, guess what? Now we're doing the same thing again. It's going to be 63. You're going to get seven again. You're going to get seven. Now, guess what? All right, so, so guess what? Because of this right here, you realize you're getting a 7.7777, so this 7 is going to just be repeated, right? Well, this is one of the occasions uh, where it's okay to round up, basically, is what we mean. So, so when you have 7.7 .7 to 1, that's basically, in this case, going to be equal to 8.1. That is your room air to oxygen ratio. All right, guys, so this next uh, question states, an oxygen flow rate of 12 liters per minute is used on a 60% Venturi mask. What is the O2 air entrainment ratio of the Venturi mask, and what is the total flow at this oxygen rate? All right, so this is a two-part question. What we need to do first is determine the entrainment ratio. Now, at this point, I'd mentioned before that I knew that 8 to 1 was the answer up here. 
because I've memorized the chart. So very likely your text that would cover this information has some sort of a chart that'll give you kind of the common, uh, particularly for a Venturi mask or, or what's commonly referred to as a air, uh, air and trainant mask, right? Um, Venturi is more of a, a trade name, I guess. Uh, there, it only comes with certain, unless there's an adjustable aperture, perhaps, on, on the ones you may use in your clinical setting. Um, a lot of them come with just different um, apparatus you actually screw in. Um, I may get one of those. I, I actually have one um, that I may show you what I'm talking about, so that, that are basically fixed, so the, so the apertures of the opening aren't adjustable. Uh, they're all fixed, so you actually have to physically change the entire apparatus. So... Um, <clears throat> But there are fixed percentages, so there are kind of common ones, 24, 28, um, 60, 50, 100%. Uh, and there are basically ratios that coincide specifically. So if you have that access to that chart, I do recommend memorizing it. Uh, but for the sake of the equation, I'm just going to work through it again for you guys. So in this case, we have... A 60% Venturi mass, so 60% FiO2, the fraction of inspired oxygen. So, what do we want to do? We want to take our 100 minus 60 over 60 minus 21. Now, like I said before, we're going to run into another disparity with that 21, uh, where some texts may say you can use 20 depending on the FiO2, I always just use 21 because I feel like it's kind of common sense when you kind of see what the outcome is. So what is 100 minus 60 is 40. What is 60 minus 21? Well, that's 39. Sorry for my preschool handwriting there. So if we divide this out, we're, we're not gonna get one, right? But you, you'll realize how close that is to a one-to-one -one ratio. Well, guess what, guys? 60% oxygen, 60% FiO2 is always a one-to-one -one room air to oxygen ratio. So I recommend memorizing this kind of stuff if you haven't yet uh, because that'll just come in hand to save you time. Perhaps on an exam that'll save you time so you're not having to do this calculation out. Um, just a kind of a test strategy there. Uh, now that addressed the first part of the question. What is the O2 air entrainment ratio of the Venturi mask? What's well, one to one? What is the total flow? Okay guys. So total flow is calculated by the sum of the ratio multiplied uh, by the flow. Just so you guys may recognize flow as something like V with a little dot over it that also means flow um, in some of the more technical formulas. In this case, the sum of the flow is two. Uh, sorry, sum of the ratio, not sum of the flow, is two. One plus one is two times in this case, uh, total flow of the oxygen rate, well, 12, minute, uh, 12 liters per minute, right? You got 12. 2 times 12 is 24 liters per minute is the total flow. Now, Sometimes you may be posed with a with a question after that. So you see, we see a total flow of 24 liters. Uh, are we meeting the patient's inspiratory needs? The answer, uh, maybe. There's kind of a golden number that you may learn about. 40 liters per minute. Kind of the golden number. Um, This patient may not need to meet that. I mean, this may be supplemental. Who knows? Um, 24 liters may be good enough. It may not be good enough. Uh, clinically, that's a little beyond me right now. I know for what we're learning right now, this is the correct answer, uh, kind of irregardless of this at the moment. So, 
All right, guys, and so in this last example I'm going to do, uh, it's kind of compounding a few things. I didn't write out the entire question because it was kind of long. Um, but it reads, a patient is receiving 35% oxygen via a Venturi mask at 6 liters per minute of oxygen. What is the total flow available to this patient? If the patient's minute ventilation is 11 liters per minute, would the total flow of this Venturi setup satisfy the patient's ventilatory needs? Okay. So I wrote down kind of some of your key information. 35% Venturi, 6 liters. We're looking for the total flow initially. We're also given a minute ventilation of 11 liters a minute. And then kind of the last part of that question. So this is kind of what we've done at first, calculating total flow. So again, guys, first part of this question, we need to determine what the total flow is on the setup right here. So, just like we did before, 100 minus 35, 35 minus 21. So don't forget, this is oxygen so minus by the, uh, the entrainment percentage there. And then uh, the percentage of that venturi mass minus the amount of oxygen that is in room air. Uh, if guys, if you don't know what a venturi mask is, Google it, or at least Google uh, the venturi principle. Uh, basically, it has to do with pressure going by and how it um, pressure differentials draw in um, through various sized openings and stuff. So, kind of a complicated one to explain. If you don't know, I recommend uh, looking that up or reading it in one of your texts. Uh, so we do this math real quick. Guys, you get 65 over 14. Uh, without actually doing the division, guys, 35% Venturi mask is a 5 to 1 air, room air to oxygen ratio. Okay, I know that doesn't exactly add up, but like I said in my last example, it doesn't have to. Um, so now... Remember we talked about the, the sum of the parts here? So the sum of the ratio is 6 times the flow, which is 6 liters. 6 times 6, guys, so that's 36. So the total flow being provided by the setup is 36 liters per minute. All right? So now we need to know, would the total flow of this Venturi setup satisfy the patient's ventilatory needs? And we're given a minute ventilation here of 11 liters a minute. <clears throat> now, there's another equation to calculate minute ventilation. V E is equal to V T times R R. Now, uh, we're not really addressing things like uh, dead space. Uh, which you may get into in your physiology, cardiopulmonary physiology stuff. Uh, this case is just uh, it potentially already accounted for here. So VE is minute ventilation, what we're already given. So we're given the answer, I guess, in that sense. We know it's, that's 11 equals. VT is tidal volume. So uh, during a quiet breath, basically, uh, how much volume they're, they're inspiring. Um, this is unknown, right? We don't know that. Times respiratory rate. We're not given that either. Now normally, right, it takes at least two to figure out an unknown. Uh, and we have two unknowns here. But the trick to this question is um, they don't indicate that the breathing uh, or the respiratory rate is irregular. That's the giveaway here. So your normal IE ratio, that's inspiration to expiration ratio, is 1 to 2. Now, this this starts to throw people off. We're talking about minutes. We got liters per minute. We got 11 liters per minute. We got the 6 liters. 1 to 2. Here's the trick. Here's the trick to this. A minute is how many seconds? 60 seconds, right? Sum of this ratio is 3. You know what this equals? 20. 
normal respiratory reading. So, you know, they say, oh, yeah, 12 to 18 breaths a minute. Okay, yeah. In the, in the case of doing this equation, assuming a 1 to 2 inspiratory to expiratory ratio, it's going to be 20 breaths. Your RR is going to be equal to 20 in that case. So you have 11 equals a uh, tidal volume times 20. <clears throat> now, guys, this is just algebra, right? Uh, I'll, I'll talk about this here a little bit more in just a second. But to finish up the equation here, uh, you divide both sides by 20, right? Those cancel. So your tidal volume is equal to 11 over 20. All right. This, if you do the long division, I'm not going to do that right now, guys. But the the answer is uh, approximately uh, 0.55, something like that. Now, if you multiply this by 60, you're going to get roughly 33 liters per minute. Now, guys, I'm ballparking these numbers because I have notes all over the place off my worksheet. But, so now we, we have this 33, all right? We have this 33. Would the total flow of this venturi setup satisfy the patient's ventilatory needs? Well, the patient needs 33. He's being provided 36. So the answer to this question is yes. It does. Now, if something were to happen, it may very quickly not. That's not a whole lot of buffer, right? 33 or 36, that's not a whole lot. Something could happen very quickly, and you may need more. But in, in the event of this question, the answer is yes. Now, uh, just to elaborate more on this inspiratory expiratory uh, ratio here, um, another thing to point out, I guess, would be one to two is always normal. Kind of like a common average, if you will. One thing I really want to point out is uh, let's talk about maybe a patient that has emphysema. Uh, so they're, they're purslip breathing. They're taking longer to exhale in order to avoid air trapping. Right? They don't want to trap air in their lungs. Uh, emphysema, maybe an uh, overcompliance of the lungs, right? So it may still only take them one to breathe in. It may take them three to exhale because they have to create that back pressure due to the purslip breathing. If you do the math, 60 divided by four makes sense because now you've reduced it to 15 breaths a minute. They take less, less breaths per minute. And you, you can verify that if you go into uh, the relationship between lung compliance, increase or decrease lung compliance uh, to respiratory rate, you can verify all of it too. Um, if someone has really bad emphysema, let's say it's a one to four. Sorry guys for that writing. So now you have 60 divided by five. You see what's happening? It's, it's not, not going well for them. Now it's down to 12. Uh, but whenever you're not given a specific respiratory rate, uh, or you're not given a specific Anything other than normal, if they don't indicate anything other than normal, it can be assumed that 1 to 2 is your story story ratio. So guys, I hope some of these calculations help. Um, I might try to do a couple more. Like I said, I promised you guys some tank duration stuff. This was just total flow and air entrainment. Uh, I also would like to do one on the ideal alveolar gas um exchange equation so that's kind of a doozy uh, there's a few constants uh things you would probably be given in the formula um but you you know you're talking about barometric pressure less the pressure of water vapor which is always 47 um and then there's also this this metabolic um respiratory coefficient that you may have to account for unless certain parameters are met. Uh, I think it's a, a, 
arterial CO2 content, partial pressure of arterial CO2 has to be less than 60, and the patient has to be on a greater than 60% FiO2. Um, and then you can disregard this 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 quotient, but uh, I may do more videos on that. This one's getting kind of long, so I hope this helps. Um, and I'll try to work on those other videos and get them all stitched together and uploaded um, soon. Anyway, guys, take care. Hope it helps. Comment, like, subscribe. Let me know if I messed up on my math at all or if I need to clarify anything. Uh, be more than happy to. All right, guys. Talk to you guys later.